Foremost, I wanted to ask you a little bit about the Tulane offense. Obviously, Willie Fritz coming in, it's different than what Tulane ran last year. What do you think of their scheme as a whole? I mean, I'm sure you've watched. I, I think it's a great scheme. Uh, they can do a lot of different things. Like I said, it's really three offenses. I mean, they can throw, they can run the option, they can run the zone play, they can run power. I mean, it's they, they got a little bit of everything. It's it's difficult to defend. I'm sure you've watched film of, of Coach Fritz teams from Georgia Southern to uh, Sam Houston State to maybe even back to Central Missouri. Right. Is it pretty much the same or has he evolved over uh, the years? I'm sh sure he's evolved. Everybody evolves. Uh, but but the, the basics of it are the same. Yeah, the, the what they do uh, in their their base is the same. Uh, again, you, you've got a good thing. Why change it? You know, it's a it's a really good offense. So is the lineup the same as Navy double slots and a fullback, or no? No, they'll be in a lot of different alignments. Yeah, okay. Yeah, they end up a lot of times with three backs in the backfield. One could be a tight end. Two could be a tight end. Uh, but they, uh, they they do a lot of different things. But the basics. There's a give, a pitch, and a keeper element. Yes. Yep. Yep, on just about every play. So it is a triple, even though it's not called triple. Well, I, yeah, I, I don't know if they read all of it, but I, I'm sure they could. Uh, so you're going to have some sort of dive, you're going to have some sort of quarterback run, and you're going to have some sort of pitch. Right. Um, and then from that, they can throw. they got play action just like our guys do. Um, you know, it's it, there's a lot of resemblance. Um, you have to defend it the same way. You have to have great eyes. You have to be very disciplined. Uh, you, you can't mix your guys up because there's a lot of different – pieces going on at the same time. So opposing coaches always complain about the fact that it's hard to get Navy ready for Navy's option in three days. You've got shoes on the other foot now. Right. Is there some of that? Uh, yeah, a little bit. Uh, you know, a lot of the things that that we do against our offense can carry over. Uh, uh, that's what I was so, my next some of, question. Some of it, some of it can't. Uh, you know, some of the things we've been working on against conventional carry over. Some of it doesn't. So, but it's, yeah, it's, it's new. It's different. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, it's, it'll be fun to go compete against them. How much do your frontline defenders get to work against the actual option? Do you feel like your def top defenders no understand option football? I, I like think so. Against it so yeah, much? yeah the, the older guys have been here. Uh, you know, the, some of them played in the game against Georgia Southern, so they have prepared for it before. Uh, a lot of them are brand new. They're seeing it for the first time. So, uh, you know, they're the ones I'm worried about. Right. And then real quickly, they're, they've made the announcement today they're going with this freshman quarterback who had 115 yards rushing. Right. What did you see out of him? Very quick, fast, a really good athlete. Um, you know, he's he's the real deal. He's a really good player. And what do you think of Hilliard, the back that you saw last year? Good good player. I mean, they have a lot of good players. Um, you know, they uh, and they use them all. It's not like you can, you know, put your sights on one or two guys. They use a lot of different people in a lot of different positions. So, uh, you know, we've got a lot to get ready for. The other thing I was going to ask you about was the pass defense. Uh, Coach Niamat said on the teleconference that he had some issues with coverage. Did you, I mean, when, when you looked at the film, did some things break down? Yeah, well, we had a, a one breakdown for sure. We got our eyes in a bad spot and got beat on a, on a bubble and go. Uh, that was uh, that the a mental error. Uh, no, that was a basically a trick formation we'd worked on, but we didn't pick it up, so I, there's two mental errors. Uh, the rest, we just got to learn how to drive the ball and know where we should be on, on all the coverages. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we really didn't do that much, but we made made some mistakes and not being where we should be coach mentioned after the game that that drag route really got you they hit it to that number five yeah time after time yeah, what, they, what they, happened what happened there we, we weren't uh covering it the correct way um basically i think they ran it six times and caught four or five of them for pretty decent yardage you know a couple of them we played right and then they picked up two yards so uh we just got to get guys in the right place on the pass is our part of this inexperience? I mean, you've got some young uh, backs back there. Yeah, some of it, but not not all. Some of it was older guys. You know what I mean? We just got to uh, be disciplined and do our job every time. We can't get our eyes somewhere where they're not supposed to be. Uh, if we do our job, it'll take care of a lot of that stuff. But you said on Saturday you liked the parts. I mean, Aloe Gilman. No, no doubt. Uh, Deshaun Williams, the young other corners, uh, Merchant or Ryan or whomever you, you know. Yeah, I, I think there's seven of those guys that can all play. Um, you know, the, we just got to get them experience. They've got to get in there and play. And uh, there was a gigantic jump from the first week of confidence and knowing where to go and, and playing you know, basically with some confidence that, than there was the first week. You know, the, the second week, this week, we played much better than we did the first week. We didn't miss as many tackles. Uh, we were around the ball better. So a lot of it's just they've got to play and uh, learn how to play and learn our standard. And, 
some of the coverage stuff wasn't to our standard. All right. All right. Thank you, Dale. Um, just was talking to Coach Pearson about the coverage. Uh, they had some breakdowns. Um, Coach Niamat mentioned it as well. You're, from your perspective, what did you see? Yeah, we just got to, you know, we just got to do a better job with our eyes, seeing the shallow crossers and just driving on them. Um, that was the biggest thing. I mean, they didn't really take many shots down the field. They took one shot down the field. Other than that, um, you know, one was a trick play, really, and then the other ones were just shallow throws. We just got to get our eyes back and, you know, be more aggressive in coverage and try to get guys on the ground. The trick play, was that the one that ended up in the touchdown pass to five? No, 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 no. Okay. That was the, uh, the the field goal where they lined up and shifted oh, yeah, everybody that was the out. Trick yeah, play, yeah, yeah. Right, right. Well, what the happened one that, on that one? Because Tyrus seemed like he gave too much cushion, and then when the guy caught the ball. Yeah, he, I couldn't. It, it was the weirdest thing you've ever seen on film, really, because both him and Mike kind of drove, and next thing you know, no one did anything. It kind of froze, and the guy just took off. Um, but, you know, Woots, Woots just got to drive it, drive it downhill and get the guy on the ground. And, you know, Daquan can be a little bit slower over the top working over to three. So, um, really, that was just about it. We just got to rally to the ball and get him on the ground. How much is this is youth and inexperience? Some of these guys are seeing their first action. You talk about a Loey Gilman. You talk about a Tyrus Rudin who was moved from wide receiver. Even Sean Williams, to some extent, is not a veteran. Um, how much is just inexperience? Uh, it's not really inexperience. It just is, you know, focus and locking in. Um, you know, Sean gave up the, the one pass where he's got to just transition his eyes from two to one um, and run out there and cover the guy. If he runs out there and cover the guy, there's no play there. Um, you know, Wooten's just got to get the guy on the ground. Um, and we've, we've cleaned some things up off of film that I think, will, you know, going into this week will be a lot better. Is, do you like the parts you have, though? Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, the great thing is we've been able to roll a lot of guys and play a lot of guys back there. And it's not because guys are screwing up or anything. It's just because we're trying to keep guys fresh throughout a game and, you know, it's a long season, trying to make sure guys stay healthy throughout the year. I think I saw Merchant and Ryan got time last week, I'm presuming, at corner. Who's rolling in there at safety to give um, Daquan and uh, Sean a break, or are they not really getting much of a break? Uh, Aloe is the other guy that will roll in there. Okay. Um, we just had a package this week, this past week, with UConn. Um, with our heavier personnel, we basically put three safeties in the game. I see. The low uh, that's yep. kind of why mm -hmm. Lowy started? Exactly. So okay. that's uh, that was what we kind of did this week with them. And then, you know, later in the game, uh, you know, some of those corner, other corners are starting to get tired. So we just kept Lowy in because he was fresh and played him a corner, which he can do. All right. So basically, would you feel confident in both Jared Ryan and Merchant? And if you need to get another safety or to give either Williams or um, mm -hmm. Daquan a blow, it would be a lowy. Yeah, which is what happened in the game, Sean. Um, needed a blow um, late in the or mid fourth quarter, and we got him out, moved to lowy back, put Jared Ryan in a corner. So, mm -hmm. um, but it's like I said early on in camp. You know, you love to have guys that you can move around within those four positions, and they can play all four. So. Um, you know, that's the, the beauty of it is you try to train them all to play it all. So mm -hmm. um, even Sean's a guy that can play corner if you needed to. Right. Posted a photo from Facebook where she was given the thumbs up from her hospital bed. Uh, what can you tell us is going on with your mom? Uh, my mom, she's uh, suffering from a syndrome, Gilliam Bear syndrome, which uh, one of the symptoms is experiencing paralysis below the waist, but not permanent. So she's received treatment for that, and she's slowly but surely gaining feeling back in her legs. And uh, she hasn't learned how to walk again, but... My mom's a fighter. She put up with me for 20 years, so I know she can handle this. I'm not. I'm not worried. Just have faith that we're going to keep it moving day by day. Uh, any prognosis as to when she might be able to get out of the hospital? Uh, not right now, but uh, just just watching the improvement, and I'm just hoping it'll be rather sooner than later, obviously, because I want her back in the stands cheering for her son. So. How tough is this for you? I mean, it's hard enough to do with all the academic and the military and football, and then to have worry about your mom. How tough has this been on you and? focusing on what you got to focus on uh, initially it was pretty tough you know you hate seeing a loved one in that state especially your mother who raised you so it, it, it hurt but you know having having the support system that I have my family who's been pretty much with me since I was a little a little child uh, I have faith that they'll take care of her so I, I can rest easy here doing what I gotta do plus I know to make her happy if I handle business at the Academy it'll, it'll just keep moving her forward and what she's doing so I know she's in good hands, so I can worry less than, than some other people that maybe don't have the same support system as I. I understand she had not missed a game home or away since you've been at the academy. That must have just really <laughs> made it tough for her. It, uh, it was it was more tough for her than I think it was for me because she she enjoys the experiences. She she enjoys the experience. She enjoys watching her son play. She's been doing it. I don't think she's missed a game since I was six years old playing mm -hmm. little league. So it was it was tough for her. But like I said, I, when I was returning that punt. I heard her. I know she was screaming. Scott even got the picture of her doing her thing. Mm -hmm. She does not miss an opportunity to, to support her loved ones. So I really appreciate her and I love her.
Well, I was gathering from what you said in the press conference that when you were a younger kid in high school and youth, you could hear your mom from the stands. Mm -hmm. Is she pretty vocal? She's very vocal, very vocal. <laughs> and sometimes it, when when the stadium wasn't so big and she could run the sideline, she would run the length of the fence as I was running for touchdowns. So <laughs> my mom's a very animated I love fan, it. and I love it. So it's uh, it's a good it's a good feeling. So obviously your dad, former Army football player. I'm going to imagine that as a young man, you went to a lot of games at West Point with him. I went to a lot of Army Navy games, so I didn't go to as much up in a Mikey Stadium. Mm -hmm. I went to a couple, went to a spring game or two, but um, a lot of the Army Navy games I went to when I was younger, when I really had no concept of the rivalry or being recruited by, let alone either school. So it was pretty cool to see the rivalry from a, from a different standpoint. That's just a, a non-biased fan because I didn't really protect like Army or Navy at the time. I was just watching football. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was pretty cool. It was pretty cool. So when they both started recruiting you, you know, was it a difficult decision to choose Navy over Army, being as that you're a uh, legacy to Army? <laughs> Honestly, it really wasn't. I just, I took the visit here, and my dad, he did a very good job of, of the father he is, just make, making it unbiased for me. So he just wanted the best opportunity for me and what he felt that I thought was the best opportunity for myself. So when I took the visit here, just everything felt right. And he didn't have any objections when I said uh, I wanted to commit to Naval Academy. So he backed me up 100%. One of your strengths has proven to be pass catching. Uh, you know, as a slot, that's, you know, they, Coach O'Rourke has said you got great hands, you run good routes. Any reason why you've proven to be so adept at pass catching? I know you spent a little time at receiver, mm -hmm. but that's partly because they saw you had that ability. Did you do much of that in high school? Uh, in high school, my first three years, I played receiver. Oh, you did? So, okay, I, I mean, I didn't per se catch a crazy amount of passes, but obviously every day, day in and day out during practice, I was running routes, catching passes. During games, I was running routes, catching passes. So it's a knack that I always really had. And then I played that position in high school for three years. So it was pretty much just one of my traits when I got here, just fell right into it.